Good morning. Uh, thank you for the uh, very kind invitation. It's always a pleasure to be back in uh, New York. Um, I will talk about uh, drug looting balloon technology and SFA lesions and the future of their use, maybe in combination with atherectomy. When we're talking about uh, the superficial femoral artery, we need to make a difference between primary lesions and instant restenosis. We know that primary lesions will recoil and we can solve this by optimizing the PTA uh, as a standalone technique or by using stents. They're also characterized by the presence of very long lesions with a very high plaque burden and the lesions are typically highly calcified which leads to problems with stent or scaffold expansion and it also might be a barrier to the drug eluding balloon therapy. Then, as already mentioned by Dr. Walker, the instant restenosis, the problem is completely different. We are dealing with a collagen matrix and smooth muscle cell proliferation inside an already fully expanded self-expandable stent. And this is a different kind of treatment that we need to do there. What do we know thus far of drug eluding balloon therapy in the SFA in primary lesions? This is actually the first study, the pilot study, that involved 87 patients done in Germany. Follow-up angiography at six months performed in 31 of the 45 patients that were included. Uh, showed less late lumen loss in the coated balloon group as compared to the 34 pa pa patients that were treated with uh, standard balloon angioplasty. Also, the number of target lesion revascularization was lower in the paxlitaxel coated balloon group than in the control subjects, and there were obviously no adverse events or reduced restenosis in patients undergoing angioplasty on FEMPOP arteries. This was followed by a larger study that also involved uh, three treatment arms. 154 patients were treated. They included a third treatment arm because in the animal studies, there was also a beneficial effect seen in uncoated balloons with paclitaxel injected intra-arterially together with the contrast medium. So that was the uh, additional arm in this, uh, this study. The primary endpoint was late lumen loss, secondary endpoints, technical success, binary restenosis rate, and also some clinical features. It was obvious in this study that the late lumen loss was best uh, or uh, best in um, uh, paclitaxel coated balloons, only 0.4 uh, millimeters. The control group did, uh, did worse, as well as the paclitaxel in contrast medium group. There were more stents used in the control group uh, and the angiographic restenosis rate of the paclitaxel coated balloon group was only 17%. While in the control group it was 44%, the results were more or less similar in the paclitaxel contrast medium group. So the things that were seen in the swine were not seen in the human. This is another study, the pacifier, using uh, one of the neuro balloons, 85 uh, patients, 91 procedures, randomization of DEB to POBA. The average lesion length was 7 centimeters for the DEB and 6.6 .6 for the control arm, and all patients had a angiography at six months. Also in this study, the DEB group showed a significant lower late lumen loss and fewer binary restenosis, and the clinical outcome at one year was also significantly better for the DEB group. DEB was associated with a significant reduction in late lumen loss and restenosis was the conclusion at six months, and also reinterventions after FEMPOP PTA were uh, reduced uh, up to one year of follow-up. Here you can see actually what happened in the uh, pacifier uh, uh, study as compared to the other studies that I already mentioned. And actually there was a positive remodeling going on in this group, probably related to the apoptosis that is caused by the paclitaxel. Putting all this together in a meta-analysis, uh, meta it was concluded that in FEMPOP arterial disease, DEB therapy is associated with superior enterostenotic efficacy as compared to standard PTA. The last study that I want to mention in primary lesions with DEB as a standalone therapy is the recently presented IMPACT SFA, a prospective multicenter uh, European and US trial, randomization two to one, single blinded, was a very good monot monitoring, independent and blind and duplex uh, correlapse, and angiographic correlapse, etc. And the follow up uh, will be up until five years. We now have the one year data. 
I just picked out some of the slides that were presented during the Charing Cross meeting in uh, London in April this year. What you can see here is that the lesion length is already considerable, but not really matching what we typically see in real life. It's 8.9 uh, centimeter, uh, more or less, in both groups. And also, the severe calcification was a very uh, a small number, only 8% in the in, uh, DEB group, 6.2% in the PTA group. And that's also really not matching the things that we typically see in normal life. Very low provisional stenting rate, probably also related to the fact that you, in order to bail out to stenting, you had to perform at least two or three balloon angioplasties, thus optimizing the balloon angioplasty result. These are the primary patency rates at 12 months in all intention to treat analysis, and you can see that there was a significant difference between the two treatment arms, uh, almost 90% for the tricoated balloon, 66% for the non-coated balloons, and also the clinically driven TLR rate at 12 months was significantly uh, better uh, for the uh, uh, lower for the uh, drug diluting balloon uh, arm. When we put this into perspective, this is a slide where I listed some of the randomized trials uh, using stents in the SFA, and actually you can see that this is more or less matching these results. Results get a little bit worse once the lesions get longer. One of the problems with the drug eluding balloon therapy is that it requires a very homogeneous distribution of the drug in the, dis in, in the vessel wall. And this can be hampered by the presence of calcification and the high plaque or thrombus burden. And as I mentioned, the impact SFA had a severe calcification in only 8% of cases. We also would like to avoid the bailout use of self-expanding stents with chronic outward pressure on the vessel wall because these may have a negative influence on the benefit of one-time drug delivery. That's why it's probably better to get rid of the uh, plaque itself. And there's some data that indicates that this is m probably better. This is a small Italian study. Only 30 patients were included, mainly clodicants, but also a significant number of patients with uh, chronic lim limp ischemia, critical limp ischemia. They performed PTA of heavy calcified lesions with a calcium score of over 3, IVUS guided uh, directional atherectomy followed by drug eluting balloon therapy using a distal protection device. Here we're talking already about lesion lengths of over uh, 11 centimeters, which is more compatible than what you uh, generally see in the uh, real life world. Good technical success, only two cases had a bill outstanding that corresponds to 6%, and the recent gnosis rate at one year on duplex was only 10% at one year, and also the TLR rate was 10%. So the conclusion of the authors was that combined use of DA and DEB may represent a potential alternative strategy for the treatment of FEMPOP severely calcified lesions. Already mentioned by Dr. Walker, instant restenosis is a completely different animal, and we know that conventional balloon angioplasty doesn't work at all. This was a randomized trial uh, comparing balloon angioplasty and cutting balloon angioplasty in patients with a symptomatic instant restenosis. Average lesion length in this study was only 8 centimeters, but the restenosis rates were very disappointing. 65 already uh, went down at 6 months. So because of the sponge-like behavior of the new intimal hyperplasia and the collagen matrix, PT alone will not work. So what can we do about it? Use drug eluting balloons. This is one of the first studies that was published, instant restenosis in DB, 39 patients, only 20% occlusions, class 3 according to Tosaka, and the rest was all class 1, being focal, less than 5 centimeters in a third, or class 2, diffuse, longer than 5 centimeters, but still patent, and only stenosis in about half of the patients. They did some additional laser debulking, uh, which might be a confounding factor. The mean lesion length was again 8 cm, and the cumulative DEB length, so there was also some additional treatment, was 160 mm. Recent noses of more than 70% at 12 months was seen in only 8% of cases, with a TLR of around 10%. However, 
looking at two years, the data uh, got worse, the patency went down, and especially when you look at the restenosis in the various classes, the class one was doing good, but the class two and class three was doing uh, relatively poor with 35 to 40 percent restenosis rates. These are the data from the patent trial, 90 lesions, average lesion length uh, over 12 centimeters, a lot of total occlusions, uh, some major adverse events and distal embolization, but very uh, good. The freedom from TLR at 6 and 12 months was 87% and 64% respectively. But as you can see here, the primary patency, although very good at uh, 6 months, dropped off to s almost 40% uh, at 12 months. So, although we had good results at six months as compared to PTA alone or one of the first initial uh, trials using drug eluding balloons, the final results at 12 months are not really uh, satisfying. When stratifying by the Tosaka class again, you can see that the class 2 and 3 are doing worse. It's not, uh, that's not a big surprise. Class 1 is doing relatively good with a patency of 54%. So we need probably something additional. This was the conclusion of the authors. Uh, it's safe. The recurrence indicates that the removal of hyperproliferative tissue alone does not solve the problem of uh, ISR in a long-term uh, basis, and therefore combination with drug eluting balloons may prove beneficial. And that this, this is the case is probably already, there are some publications, this is a study from Germany using atherectomy, directional atherectomy and DEB, restenotic lesions, a historical control group and a new uh, cohort of patients that were treated additionally with drug eluting balloons, instant restenosis in most of the cases, but there are also some native restenotic uh, vessels that were not stented. Lesion length very long, over 17 centimeters, and what you can see here is that the uh, probability of being free from restenosis is getting down, is getting up if you use the additional drug balloon, balloon th therapy. So the combination of directed atherectomy with adjunctive DEB is associated with a better event-free survival at 12 months. A small randomized trial from Italy, uh, from Rome, 48 patients, 24 were treated with DEB alone and 24 with the combination therapy, all CLI patients and all Tosaka class 3 lesions. And here you can see that this is a considerable lesion length over 20 centimeters. The primary patency was significantly better in the combination therapy group, 6 months, 91%, which is significantly higher than in the previously mentioned studies, and at 12 months it dropped down, but it still remained in these very long lesions up to 66%. The DEB alone did not work at all, so we need the debulking. TLR rates were good for the combination therapy and also the major amputation rate in this CLI group was very low in the combination therapy group with 8%. Our own data, 14 patients were treated. We now have a follow-up of almost two years in this group. Mean lesion length over 13 centimeters, some very uh, short, but most of them were very long and the longest was almost 40 centimeters. We were dealing with very aggressive restenosis with pati patients uh, occurring uh, restenosis at 8.6 months already. We had two cases of distal embolization, probably patients with an acute and chronic uh, disease, uh, anamnestically there was uh, an indication like this. We now have an almost two-year follow-up of the whole group. We only saw one TLR at three years after the instant restenosis treatment in a patient that I regular, uh, saw on a regular basis previously. The Rodeford classification improved and here you can see the duplex follow-up at 19.4 months. We had one case, the same case as the TLR with a binary restenosis and although you can see that the restenosis is not completely going away. Uh, in four patients that had a two-year follow-up, we saw only a 25 to 50% stenosis. And during the first year of follow-up, in the remaining seven here, you can see that there are no signs of new intimal hyperplasia at all. 
no major amputations were needed. So in conclusion, revascularization of task A, B, SV lesions can be effectively performed using DEB. The role of DEB in real world heavily calcified task C and D lesions need to be established. There probably is a role for atherectomy and the best tool needs to be established. For treatment of Tosaka 2 and 3 instant restenotic lesions, debulking is essential prior to treatment with DEP. I thank you.